Today, I'm gonna to give you 10 scalable business ideas. Starting the right business is more important than just starting any business. Some people have started the wrong business. It's not scalable, you can't scale past the local level, and you have a ceiling to what you can do with your business. So today, I'm giving you 10 business ideas that can be scaled past the local level. And if you want a deep dive on what business you should start, you're trying to find a business idea, you wanna be an entrepreneur, but you can't find a business idea, I have created a course called the Business Idea Blueprint on my website that you can purchase. And from that course, you will learn how can I find the business idea that works for me? How do I find business ideas? How do I find opportunities that are actually gonna work in my community? Because not every business idea works at every location. So how do you find that specific business idea that you can get off the ground and blow your entrepreneurial journey up off the ground? You can visit Nate Jones Entrepreneur slash business dash idea. Also, I have the link in my bio below. Go ahead and check it out. Be happy to help you out through this next entrepreneurial journey. Okay, so let's hop into these 10 business ideas. Number one is bookkeeping, okay? And within this category, I put bookkeeping, accounting, and insurance, and any sort of administrative task that can be outsourced from a traditional business, okay? I own an insurance agency. I really like it. We operate in 26 states. I have an accountant that helps clients in over 10 states, and we don't have a bookkeeper because we do that in-house, but I know bookkeeping companies that, in, that bookkeep for people in multiple states. You can do this business from wherever. It can be scaled. You can continue to add clients, continue to add staff. You can scale this past a local level. Number two, virtual assistants as a service or as an agency. So as a service, this means, hey, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna answer calls for your business. And this is what the monthly fee, we're gonna provide a call center or maybe we're gonna provide administrative tasks. We're gonna do something as a service. It's not connected to one virtual assistant. It's connected to your company outsourcing that for that business. Virtual assistant companies as an agency means that you're wholesaling a virtual assistant to that company. This means, so let's say for my company, I'm looking for a virtual assistant. I will connect with your company and you go find me a virtual assistant that will work for me. And then you're probably charging more than what the virtual assistant costs. You should be as a virtual assistant wholesaling agency. So essentially you're my middleman and the middleman makes money. So you can do that and you can really scale that business and literally anyone in the world, any business in the world can be your client. Number three, lead generation, outsource sales acquisition company. Okay, so what that means is I have another company called Contractor Back Office, and what that company does is it generates leads for local contracting jobs. What my company does is we then go out and find contractors who are looking to grow and want jobs, but they're not getting that many jobs. I'm good at at acquisition, client acquisition, getting clients coming in, getting clients coming through websites. Okay, so let me do that and I will sell you a lead, $15, $20 a lead for a bathroom remodel. You pay for it. That's cheaper and maybe more efficient than you trying to do that yourself. So I make money, the contractor makes money. Creating a sales company, this means, hey, Maybe there's companies out there, and I know there are, that don't have time to go out and acquire new customers, but they also can't find new salespeople. It's very hard to find salespeople in today's day and age. So as a company, you can say, hey, let us take over your acquisition of new clients. We'll schedule meetings for you. You're going to pay per meeting, and then you can make a ton of money doing sales for people because if you do it right and they're successful, they have no problem paying you because they're making money as well. Number four, YouTube influencing and social media. And I know some people are gonna be like, are you kidding me, Nate? I'm just gonna tell you right now, if you can add value online, I believe I add value. I make money off my YouTube. I make money off of different products that I have. I make money from different brand deals. So I make money from my influence online because I know about business. I've bought businesses. I've grown businesses successfully. I'm a successful entrepreneur, so I talk about what I know. So if you want to become some sort of influencer or some sort of YouTube guru on certain things, become an expert at something and be able to give your advice away that you will probably get paid for. So you can make decent money. I think from YouTube alone, I make anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 a month. And then from other spots, I make 
more money outside of just YouTube, but just telling you from YouTube alone, my small channel with only 10,200 subs or 300 subs, wherever I'm at right now, I make 1,500 a month. So yeah, some of the guys that are actually have a ton of subs make even more money. Number five, social media management, web design and marketing, okay? So this is a little bit, I think a little bit oversaturated right now, but the thing I like about this is it's scalable. Okay, so we can continue to have clients in multiple states, we can design websites for people, we can have a niche marketing product that we can sell to multiple companies. Number six, customized products being sold on Etsy, or um, there's another online marketplace, I forget what it's called, uh, wholesaling products or selling products under your white label. I know people, that do not manufacture their own products that they have under their own brand name, but they make very good money as if they manufacture them, right? And the same thing with wholesaling a product that somebody else, if you can create eyeballs and you're able to sell a product that somebody else has developed, and they will pay you a commission for that, kind of like a manufacturer sales rep, okay? So you can make money if you're able to sell a product, okay? So selling the product, know what product you wanna sell, be able to do it. This is also called drop shipping. I hate using that word because people, um, it's been oversaturated, people have been sold a ball of yarn in the drop shipping industry on, hey, this is how you do it for $10 and you can become a millionaire. That's not necessarily true, but there is something to be said about this business. Number seven, this is a, $7.3 trillion industry that a lot of people don't talk about unless you fall into it. It is the logistics and dispatch transportation industry. The trucking industry, the ocean freight, air freight, air cargo, all of these things that people wanna buy. I have an Amazon truck show up to my house maybe once or twice a day. It's crazy. We buy stuff on Amazon, it always comes to our house. Okay, this is what people do. They shop on here. So how can we get people's product to people's houses and you would be surprised how easily you can infiltrate this industry and start making money as a dispatcher or a freight forwarder or a freight broker in different industries. If you can figure out how to get in the logistics industry, you can make a lot of money very quickly. Number eight, a staffing and recruiting firm. Okay, so right now there's a lot of companies that want to hire people. They are looking for people and it's hard to find great people. Every time I talk to business owners because we do business insurance for thousands of businesses across the nation. And I am still somewhat involved in the sales side of it, so I still talk to some of our bigger clients and new clients coming in. And I'm like, what's your biggest problem? What's the biggest like issue at your company? Finding great people, okay? So a staffing company can come in and say, look, it's exhausting. It's exhausting interviewing people. It's exhausting finding great people. Let us do that for you, and then we will get a dollar amount of what you're paying them. So if someone's getting paid $20 an hour, staffing company's probably making $2 an hour of that. Or a recruiting firm, if we can bring great people to you, let's agree that on their salary, we get paid 10%. 10% of what the annual salary is, we get paid for bringing that person to you so you didn't have to do it. So staffing and recruiting firms can make a ton of money. There's recurring revenue and it can be scaled because you can get contracts with businesses across the nation. Great business to start. Number nine, passive ownership franchises. I would not advise a franchise unless you're a very specific person who has financial resources, okay? So let's say you're working a job, you're making three to $500,000 a year, you're making a lot of money, and it doesn't make sense for you to step away from that career. Because let's face it, for you to replace that income in a business is gonna take time. It's gonna take some time and it may be very easy for you to make the three to 400,000. Trust me, I understand. I know people right now that wanna start a business but they make too much money. And I advise them, please don't, don't do it. Don't do this to yourself. Life has given you too much for you to give up. Now, if, if you really want to make more money than what you're making, then yes, you're gonna have to start a business. But let's really look at it before we do that. So in this scenario, you can own a business, a franchise, that's more passive, and I've heard that some of the franchises like Subway or different franchises, maybe some car wash franchises where the owner does not have to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations. That the owner really needs to devote about five to 10 hours a week, maybe even less once the franchise is off the ground and running. So picking the right franchise, being paired with a franchise that, 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 that does not require you as the owner to be there every day is a great business for you to start if you have the financial resources for the franchise fee and the down payment and all the expenses that go with starting a franchise. I would really advise <laughs> that you really think deeply into this before pulling the trigger on anything because there are some things that could go south with franchises. Number 10, 
Very kind of niche business, but I'm trying to bring in businesses that I really believe have the ability to scale. And this is the software development, coding, implementation of different software and applications business. I know in my industry, the insurance industry, a lot of insurance agencies are developing apps for their clients. Clients can request changes on the application. They can add drivers, maybe add a vehicle that they just bought. Everything can be done on the insurance agency app. Okay, so this person, whoever developed that, has sold this application to multiple companies across everywhere. The company depends on it, continues to pay it. It's scalable software. Some of the most profitable, highest multiple businesses that can be sold are software companies. If you know how to code, you know how to develop software, you can make so much money, it's insane. So if you can develop a software that solves a need or makes it easier to do business, that saves me time. I have software at my companies that I have implemented that have saved me time, that I pay a ton of money for because it has made my life easier from an expense category or a time category. So if you can save people money or you can save people time in software, you will make a ton of money. Okay, so these are the 10 scalable business ideas. Like I mentioned before, if you're looking for a specific business idea for you, an actual opportunity in your community, I have developed a course called the Business Idea Blueprint. In this course, you will learn how to find your business idea that will actually work for you. Because a lot of these ideas may not work for you. You don't know what works for you, but in this course, I'm able to dive deep into how you can actually formulate what are the ideas. How do I, how do I get to like 100 business ideas write them all down, how do I grade them all, and how do I actually see if there's an opportunity in my community. When you leave this course, you will have a better understanding of, hey, I have about two to three business ideas that I know that if I started right now, there's an opportunity, and you're gonna leave that course with two to three business ideas that you are ready to implement, and you're gonna be able to have a better understanding of how we're gonna be successful starting those businesses. So as always, please like and subscribe. Thank you.